days ago, a young woman named Nada was killed on the streets of Tehran in a shooting that was captured on videotape. It was uploaded surreptitiously, and it then rocketed around the world online. Nada's killing galvanized Iranians themselves and people around the world in solidarity with the opposition mo movement that had sprung up in Iran after the disputed presidential election there on June 12th. The fact that it's been 40 days since the date of Nada's killing is important symbolically and politically. In Shia Muslim tradition, the dead are mourned in a cycle of three, then seven, then 40 days. 40 days marks the end of the period of mourning for someone who has died, and today, the end of the period of mourning for Nada. It brought the Iranian opposition movement back into the streets and back into the headlines at a time when the regime against which they are protesting has never looked weaker. At the cemetery where Nada and other protesters are buried in fresh graves. Police used tear gas and batons to disperse the crowds that had gathered, despite the government banning public displays of mourning. Mir Hussein Musavi, whose suspicious supposed defeat in the June 12th election sparked the mass demonstration seven weeks ago, attempted to join the protesters at the cemetery. But when he arrived, he was surrounded by police and forced to leave before he could address the crowd. And the backdrop for this dramatic, persistent, defiant resistance in the street of Iran is, of course, the government that these protesters decry. The president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, due to be sworn in next week, even as he has split, in some senses, from the country's religious supreme leader and from many of the country's senior clerics. And as most of the Iranian parliament wouldn't even show up for his supposed victory party after he was declared winner of the election. Today at the cemetery where Nada is buried, the New York Times reports that some protesters were chanting, Nada is alive. Ahmadinejad is dead. Joining us now is Reza Aslan. He's a contributing editor at the Daily Beast, and he's author of the book, How to Win a Cosmic War, God, Globalization, and the End of the War on Terror. Reza, thanks very much for joining us. Nice to see you. Thanks, Rachel. Welcome to Los Angeles, or as we Iranians call it, Terangelis. Terangelis? Yes. That's very nice. <laughs> you know, you, it's, it, it is amazing. Part of the thing that's great about being in L.A. is you see compared to the rest of the country, the disproportionate coverage of Iranian events here. Yeah, we take press. it very seriously over here. There's actually about, uh, I think, eight or nine Iranian-Persian satellite stations coming out of L.A. That's more than there's network TV. Wow. So, yeah, we it's take amazing. it seriously. Well, I um, am no expert on uh, matters Iranian or on Shia Muslim tradition, but am I right in terms of the symbolic importance of this being day 40 uh, since June 20th, the day that Nada and other protesters were killed? That's right. You said it just right. So, in, in Shia tradition, there is a cycle of mourning that takes place primarily on the 40th day after a death. And this was the 40th day after the death of Neda Aga Sultan, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But it was an opportunity uh, for all of the protesters uh, who have died and who are still in prison uh, for, for all of them to be remembered uh, in, a, in an act of religious devotion. And in many ways, this was really a challenge to the regime. They, what, what the protesters were saying is that, look, we're just here to, to move forward on our religious obligations. If you want to stop us, then it's you who's being irreligious. So it's a, a way to use religious doctrine to shame the government that prides itself in part on its piety. Yeah, and in fact, this is part of a grand strategy that the protesters and the entire anti-Ahmadinejad coalition has been using. One, to work within the legal framework of the government. Uh, so, for instance, a few days ago, a former president, Khatami, uh, declared that we should have a referendum in Iran uh, that to once and for all decide this election. And that's very clever because the constitution of Iran actually allows for referenda, uh, whereas, you know, in many other cases that you're, you're really, your hands are tied. And then now using these kinds of acts of religious devotion, again, trying to say to the regime that, you know, we are the ones who are being true to the idea of the Islamic Republic. You are the one who's betraying it. There, in that vein, there was um, a report today that some of the chants today at the cemetery, and I mentioned one of them, Nada is alive, Ahmadinejad is dead. Uh, but there are also reports that protesters were chanting, Independence, Freedom, Iranian Republic. And that would be a pointed contrast to the slogan from Iran's revolution 30 years ago, which was Independence, Freedom, Islamic Republic. Yes. If that indeed happened, and again, we can't confirm this because there aren't independent reporters that we can call about this sort of stuff. 
If that is true, what would that mean? Well, look, there is a, a very large and diverse coalition forming against Ahmadinejad, and some of them are uh, what we would call secularists who want to remove religion from, from the state altogether. Mm -hmm. There are those who want to work within the system in order to reform it uh, little by little. Uh, there are those who feel that we, what we should do is go back to the original vision of Khomeini, that somehow, you know, Iran has moved away from that. It's not what binds, it's not what they have in common that binds this coalition together. It's what they don't want. And what they don't want is the kind of militarization of Iranian politics, the sort of police state that Ahmadinejad represents. And in terms of Ahmadinejad's strength or weakness, he is due to be sworn in August 5th. What do you think we should be looking for in terms of the strength of the opposition movement, his own strength, and the future of the regime? Well, there's no question that August 5th is going to be another massive day of protest, both in Iran and throughout the world. Uh, last Saturday, you had 100 cities around the world uh, protesting in solidarity with Iran. You're probably going to see something co close to that. But really, what you're going to see from here on out after August 5th is that now Ahmadinejad is in charge of this mess. Mm. And so at this point, he's been sort of in this uh, liminal stage where he hasn't really been in charge of anything per se. But now he's going to have to figure out a way, most importantly, to get the economy back on track. The protesters have become very sophisticated. They are now attacking the government where it hurts in their pocketbook by uh, taking money out of banks and not buying products, uh, boycotting certain products that advertise on state-run television. This is how you get this government to pay attention. And somehow Ahmadinejad is going to have to figure out a way to fix this in the midst of this whole illegitimacy issue that he's right. dealing with. And in the midst of every time anybody blinks, people being out in the streets in defiance and open defiance of the government. This, yeah. as I've said every time I've appeared on this show, this is far from over. Yeah. Reza Aslan, columnist, our contributing editor, excuse me, congratulations yes. wow. on the promotion, uh, The Daily Beast, and author of How to Win a Cosmic War, God, Globalization, and the End of the War on Terror. It's great to see you, Reza. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Great to see you.